Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War unification cast this side of East Yorkshire. And today I've got a 1 versus 1 on Emerald River. Playing on the northern side as the Pale Guard, I've got Star Fox 8612. And playing on the southern side as the Renegade Guard, as a Fraxian variant, we have got British Gentleman. British Gentleman is going to go for a couple of revolutionary volunteers and a Fraxian recruitment centre as his opening. Where a Star Fox is going to go for a tech presidency here, a Guardsman squad, a Conscript squad, as well as a Infantry Command. So it's another example of the old versus the new. We did see earlier on in the week the Imperial Guard versus the Farsa Enclave. So it'd be quite cool to see how these guys differ, considering that the Imperial Guard and the Renegade Guard are actually quite a similar faction in many, many ways. But I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the differences as the game goes on. No need to front load the cast with a bunch of information. We may as well get involved in the nitty gritty of stuff. So Revolutionary Warriors, or should I say Volunteers even, are going to come forward and capture their nearest and dearest, the fairest and farthest, some would say. And yeah, it's quite a good map for actually both of these factions, considering that the players are separated by Ready these three choke points here. Got a wider one here of some negative cover, where we're going to be careful about your positioning. But generally over on this side, it's quite, a, quite an even side of things, and same with this kind of thing, with a relic on either side to be fighting for. So probably be easier Catch for the Renegade face. Guard to defend on this Holding side, because there's a relic are. for them to uh, build a listening post on. And vice versa for the... Imperial Guard on this side. Well, I've seen the commander come out, and he will be going for a Psyker first and foremost. Be able to snipe out any kind of hero stuff going on here. Renegade Man Magister. God, fuck! Renegade Magister Officiorum is going to come out, and he's going to go for some Black Guard bodyguards. So these guys are a little bit different in the sense that the ready. Comet, well, the uh, command squad has a little bit of flexibility in Tier 1. Able to go for that Commissar, Psyker, and Priest, whatever combination he wants to go for. Whereas the... Uh, Officiorum can only really go for Black Guard Bodyguard until he gets into Tier 2 and is able to get that bloody handed Reaver. I mean, it's not, not terrible considering that the. I mean, if we can do a little sweeping. So, oh, don't you run away from me. Oh, they always run away from me in the end. All right, so. <laughs> um, so they've got a plasma gun, which is very good uh, in the range department. But the uh, command squad for the Imperial Guard, much more co close combat orientated. So if these guys can keep the distance, they'll be able to crump these guys good and proper. If these guys run towards them and start slapping them around, then it'll be a completely different story. I see that Psyker die very, very quickly. We'll get a zap on the fish arm and actually brings it down really, really low. So yeah, maybe everything I just said there is absolutely nonsense because that was a ranged engagement and they just... <laughs> oh no. Oh dear. Oh, we've got a transit turret down here. So that will stop these guys in their tracks. Actually kill that Psyker clean off. Now the commander squad is going to have to run away. Now also got two black guard bodyguards on this side. It's confused me because I've got the word guard twice in that in that name. Bothers me greatly. Double revolutionary warriors. Oh no, never mind me. There's one Vraxian militia squad. So imagine the revolutionary volunteers are your conscripts. And these guys are your militia. And I suppose that's one difference as well. Is that the Imperial Guard can recruit regular fully qualified guardsmen and conscripts from their field command. Whereas... From the Bastion, you can only recruit volunteers. Such is the way of things. No major aggression is happening at the moment. We are seeing the revolutionary volunteers making their way over onto this relic. Is your wish? Conscripts are standing around looking at these listing posts. As the guardsmen come over the onto this side. Voice. I imagine that both players will be... Uh, uh, yeah, I think that this game will be a little bit more about the positionals. About where people stand and you know, what kind of uh, place that they defend. Both these factions do lend themselves quite handsomely to a defensive posture. So it might be a case of holding each section of the map and then poking and prodding, seeing where they can get some engagements going. Revolutionary volunteers being killed very quickly as the guardsmen engage in some las gun, machine gun combat. But they will be chased away. Guardsmen have got a little bit less less, less, less flexibility than the Braxton militia squads. Because they were able to get more stuff. But then again, in saying that, like things like long lazes and other stuff require tier 2 and mechanized commands. Whereas for the Imperial Guard, the regular variety, where are you? Yeah, they can basically get everything in tier 2. So less options, but easier access. I've seen the command squad coming over here as well to spot these guys. Commissar with the conscripts. Quite like the idea of putting a commissar in with these guys. If you ever need to shoot them. You're losing a regular conscript rather than fully qualified guardsmen. Man squad just tearing apart those militia squads. Priest in there as well, getting some good stab-ins. 
absolutely annihilating that squad. Quick, sharpish. While that's going on over here, we are seeing... Ah, that was a tranche to it. Killing these guys as they were engaging in some nonsense. So actually quite a lot of tranche to it. We've got one here. We've got one... I've got two here, actually. Oh, I do much prefer the uh, positionings on this tranche to it, though, because it covers the negative cover. So very nice. Same with this heavy bottle to it here. And we're we'll seeing... Oh, right, okay, so... British gentleman is going to just build lots of turrets and hide behind them, I imagine. Now, I suppose that makes sense. The Vraxian Guard are very strong when they hit tier 3. That's when they get the uh, able to dedicate themselves to one particular Chaos God or any kind of, or how would one say, the... Oh, what's it called? The, the star where you don't commit yourself to one particular God. Chaos Undivided, that's the one. See, I'm not a heretic, so that knowledge is not forward in my cranium. No one's going for tier 2 at the moment. Plenty of plasma generators being built. All Imperial Guard, though. Current economies are 68 and 20. Compared to 110 and 10. Yeah, lack of plasma generators compared to... Old Star Fox over here. Tier 2 on the way. Star Fox makes me think of... Well, obviously, I, I know who it makes me think of. It makes me think of the character Star Fox. And it reminds me of the time when... That pivotal moment in childhood where we were choosing between... Buying a PlayStation 3... An Xbox 360, or a plumbing... Was it PlayStation 3? Why the PlayStation was coming out at the time? Or a GameCube. I picked the GameCube, because I thought Star Fox looked cool. And it was a really rubbish game, I have to say. And since then... Painful memory of all my friends playing on the PlayStation and the Xbox together. Halo and all that stuff. I'm sat there playing... Bloody Star Fox. That's probably where my hate fairies come from, really. Deep-seated, or seeded even, hatred. Anyway, there was a gauge there while I was going on a bit of a rant. Yeah, double trans turrets. That's going to prevent any kind of infantry coming round over on that side. A little bit more vulnerable over here, though. And there's a wider range for them to manoeuvre around, although I suppose that trans turret will get them no matter which angle they come from. Are you are in Tier 2. Oh, you're about to go into Tier 2. Oh, it's got triple tech priest and you see us coming over here. Bit of overkill, but I mean, that will that, that will be the most built-up listing post ever. Conscripts are going to go in for a second pass, see what they can do. Nope, the trench is still there. Do quite like that. Just testing the waters with the conscripts. And it only cost them one, two, only cost them three Imperial lives. That's remarkably cheap, all things considered. We get some minefields down here as well. Revolutionary Volunteers. They're going to do exactly the same. Perk and Prod and see who's there. Lots of money for the Vaxxing Gal at the moment. Are you going for Tier 2? Yeah, no, you're not. You're going for Revolutionary Volunteers. Spending money on Plasma Generators. Volunteers ain't going to be standing up against the Guardsmen. No time. That's all. Fair trans to it. That's... Okay, right. This is getting a bit of overkill, Mr. Gentleman. A little overkill indeed. Every bottle over here being upgraded right, to back, plasma cannons. And what's the plan for you then? You're in tier 2 now. You've got a heavy weapons team on the way. And I might even, dare I say, I might speed things up just a smidgen. Just see what these players are going to do. Right. Revolutionary Guard right, on the left hand side. Yeah, They've got their yeah, Chaos Breacher the in there with them to keep their morale stable. Heavy weapons team in here. You've gone for a last cannon of all things. How much tanks for you to go for? Although, are you planning to maybe see if you can snipe out the listing first? Potentially, possibly. Oh, there we go. Yep. Yeah. So you've gone for your long-range scanner. And will... Well, is that enough DPS to break through the listing first in good time? I don't think it is. Here come the volunteers. Seeing if they can dispatch a heavy weapons team. But they've got conscripts. They've got turrets. Yep. Yeah. Oh, dear. Just lives being traded for scant information. Very emotional. Well, everyone is well and truly trenched in. A Vraxian recruitment centre over here. So they're able to transport troops from around over on this side too here. Might be an idea actually to build one up over on this side as well. That way you can have all your fighting forces no matter which side the enemy come forth. You have the standard bearer bearing a standard. Able to inspire and keep the men floating, fighting fit. And we've also got the first of the Chimeras coming forth. 
And yeah, I mean, I suppose that's one way to just ignore the transit turrets. Pop your boys in there and just drive past them. I mean, because if you put all your money defending on the Standing front stuff, ready. you just get the boys inside a, a tank, drive them forward into these little undefended bits. I reckon that'll do some serious good, I reckon. Here comes the Chimera. Game is afoot. Last cannon making quick work of that transit turret. Once that's down, the guy inside here can pop out and say hello. Are there any people inside you? No, there isn't. Never mind me. But one Chimera able to handily take on those revolutionary volunteers. They're able to get plenty of missile launches there. But it's, it's quite a bit, a bit of a risk there. 35 blue and 20 green. It's very expensive. These guys are quite vulnerable to being dead. So it's a lot of money to put on such a fragile unit. Always good in a pinch. Always good for that flexibility. Here comes the lieutenant. So I'll have to double check what you do because I can't. That's, that's a relatively new thing for the Imperial Guard. For the life of me, I can't actually remember what you do. So we'll, we'll, we'll look at the tool tips for you when we next spot you. These guys could push forward if they want to. There's not much going on here. I, I mean, they've got the anti-air heavy bolter thing, but... I mean, actually, I don't know. Would, would, would you be able to do it? I mean, if you give your revolutionary volunteers some missile launchers, that'd be an idea. But our front has been opened on the left-hand side. That's seeing a sentinel. And here is the, the lieutenant. Right, hold on. Let me do my usual... It's quite a common thing happens to happen on the channel at the moment. But we are learning a new thing. What do you do, Lieutenant? You decrease damage taken by friendly infantry units by ordering his troops to make good use of the cover available. That's cool. In addition, can command troops to prioritize firing set enemy target, increasing their accuracy. Oh, okay. All right, sir. So you help people not die, and you help people do killing. That is a useful thing for a unit, or should I say, a commander to do. Nice stuff. All right, well, got plenty of guardsmen over here. Nice little circle. The old campfire stories are blaring. Plenty of Vraxian people over here. Got a Vraxian militia heavy weapon squad as well. Unlike the Imperial Guards heavy weapons team, you can get multiple guys in there. And they can also embed themselves in the ground. So they can either be uh, maneuverable, but vulnerable. Or like these guys, they can sit down and have a lot more armor. Heavy bottle took being placed down here. So actually, all the way... Well, before now, the... Renegade Guard had the lion's share of the map control, but now the Imperial Guard have finally got their own relic. So they can now just sit back and chill. As they can just now get their relic units out later on in the game. Gonna go for a second field commander. Okay, so plan to get plenty more plasma generators than I imagine. Got economies being 104 and 39. Compared to 163 and 19. So you've had a massive economy all this time. Are you in tier 3? I don't think you are, no. Well, the Beastmen out. Very strong close combat squad. If they lose morale, they do tend to fight amongst themselves, but they can get a Beast Pack leader and an Exalt Champion, but only in Tier 3. It does seem that a lot of the Braxian potential is unlocked in Tier 3. I suppose the Imperial Guard have got lots of options when it gets to Tier 2. Valkyrie Assault Carrier. Like I say, look, look, all these defences completely ignored by just flying over them. Beautiful stuff. I'm just going to come in and start destroying things. Although you're not exactly... I suppose the assault carrier isn't designed to kill buildings or vehicles all that well. But, that being said, no one's going to stop him. The Hellhound coming through. Now, can the Hellhound fire upwards? Gonna be upgraded to being a devil dog. Yeah, these guys cannot fire upwards. Much like they're saying in Shaun of the Dead, dogs cannot look up. So they're now going to go for a heavy stubber. Should do them some good. Oh, now can you fire? Oh, oh right, because you're a devil dog. Right, so you've got a last cannon. Right, never mind me. Well, that's him dead. Didn't even kill one of them. But if you had a couple, or if you went for the other, uh, the Vendetta heavy gunship, although I don't know whether that's in tier 2 or not. It could be in tier 3, as far as I understand. These guys are just still My standing around. Will be ruthless. You've got all the op like now, no, right? Even if you've, even if you lose a bunch My of volunteers, you've got the missile launch on them. Well, I suppose that's the problem oh, when you're elsewhere. playing a defensive faction. You get quite comfortable just sitting on the back lines, not doing much. Got the Sentinel, 
over here, upgrading itself with a multi-melter. And we are going to speed things up a little bit more. Got the long-range scanner. Heavy weapons teams putting themselves up. And they will spot those trans turrets. But one singular missile been <laughs> fired, but completely missing that heavy weapons team. Here come the basemen there. That is not a pretty sight for a last kind of heavy weapons team. You can't kill them quickly enough. They're going to come in, cut these guys down, but all that firepower turns those beastmen to a red smear. And quite, quite a large red smear on the floor as well. Heavy weapons team going to fall back. Might need to get a medic out there just for health and stuff. Are you, yeah, you're using that long range scanner. Because both teams are able to do it. And what kind of mark are you so going to go for, Mr. Victoria, British Gentleman? Sure. So the mark of corn allows them to basically do more range damage uh, and gives uh, them increased armor well, penetration. Well, 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 also gives them access to the uh, the mark of corn version of a chimera, like a test judo or whatever it's called. And also gives the eviscerator or eviscerator assassin, whatever you call them, it lets them do the blood rage ability, makes them punch people. Harder and longer in the face. Nurgle we saw in the last cast. Able to give everyone more health and health regeneration. As well as being able to throw down some uh, very strong, actually. Yeah, very strong. Yeah, Murtar, Bombardier, Blooming, Nurgle, Poison stuff. Uh, they can go for Slanesh. Increase their speed and morale. As well as with the combat medic that you can recruit on the Vraxian side of things. It does give him the combat drugs ability. Which just basically makes everyone uh, move faster and just general kind of buff and stuff. And what was the last one? Uh, Zinch. Uh, when you've got your uh, Renegade Fishorum dude. And you get your... Is it the Vox Operator? It's either the Vox Operator or the Mastermind. I can't remember which one. But when you've got the Vox Operator and you've gone for the Zinch version of things. He can throw down a long range scanner which can see infantry units. And it also bombs the area as well to so basically get an extra brain scanner and more bombardment stuff be interesting to see which one it goes for version of volunteers they're not going to stand up against this but they do manage to take down that chimera they die very quickly still got trans trucks over here and they are going to be starting to build up some more hellhounds this is the time where the counter assault is going to happen over on this side so a bit of yin and yang this is a sizable Imperial Guard force. They are losing. What, what's actually killing it? Oh, it's just dudes inside listing first. As well as, well as the listing first itself. Guardsmen. I'm not known for the durability. They are known for their numbers. And here comes the militia and volunteers on the right flank. Got plenty of missiles, also got a Hellhound, well, they had a Hellhound, the Hellhound is now dead. Time we have been surrounded by fire and flame. Got that command squad out. Priest in turn. Zealous Fury, keeping them alive. Also, a beautiful bombardment from the commander. Right smack bang in the middle of the Vraxian volunteers. Nearly all the infantry is dead. Still got that militia squad over here, but very nice. Explosion from the Special Weapons Squad. Although they're primarily anti-vehicle and building, the grenade ability that they have is absolutely devastating against infantry. So yeah, they managed to push down over here quite nicely, and we've got our oh, best friends side by side, two hellhounds. Managed to kill this. These guys could move and capture this if they wanted to. But you know what? They quite like the idea of just, just chilling out. All right, tier three has been finished, and they've gone for a Mark of Nurgle. Which, if the Imperial Guard goes for an infantry heavy composition, then those Nurgle bombs will do them some serious justice. The Hellhounds are coming over. They've gone for the Devil Dog upgrade. Doing a lot more damage against buildings and vehicles. And uh, the Gatling gun upgrade. Barely scratching the surface of this Hellhound. Admech, dude, tech priest, jumping inside the mechanized command. For safety reasons, Sentinel looking for a last cannon. 
But we want to avoid being involved in some combat before he gets that last cannon out there. I was going to go for a second sentinel. I'm going to pull people back. Ah, there we go. Going to pull back one sentinel over here. One goes down. Another mechanized command attempts to be built up. Focusing on that temporary tendency. It will kill him. Special weapon squad out. And, oh no, your caskins, never mind me. Got crack grenades. Rod Bomber. <laughs> what were you doing? Doing a strafing run, but killing some of your own men. Well, you know, you can't, you can't let them get too comfortable, can you? you? Can't let them feel too safe on the ground. More scans. As the guardsmen consolidate the holdings on this side. I've seen vast been placed right down here that as well as a air shaker platform and a toxin shell so it takes a while to research and do you have to have you got to basically research each individual one that you fire i hope you do because that's one of them dead well it's one fired and yep they're all gonna die slowly but surely but it doesn't seem to go forever and ever or does it you're still losing health you are still losing health well, that's one way to definitely clear out infantry. Just right, this place smells now. Go away. Alright, so, so it's not like, say, for example, the plague zombie bug that we saw uh, for the Death Guard, where if you get hit once, that's it, you slip and surely die. That does wear off after a while. So it's got to, I assume, this like area here is then poisoned for a little while. It's going to pull back out of that area. So, nice way to basically, how would one say to. Area denial, that's what it is. To the nice some area. Trying to bomb it slowly, but surely working away through the revolutionary volunteers. Doing an amazing amount of damage, I have to say. Huge stuff going on over here. Sentinel being stabbed around by the Ogren Berserkers. Also got that Renegade Ever Eversaw, that's what you call it. Not eviscerator, but an Eversaw. Just look at this lady go to town. Jumping straight in, big kick. And just giving people the backhand, keeping that pin pan strong as the plasma cannon from the heavy bottle to it does more damage to themselves than anyone else. This is a of the Eversaw, sorry. Brilliant against single target units, as well as just mulching through the lightly armoured. Falls over with the guardsmen when they contact such a ball of anger and chains. It's got a stock tank. Little, little crab scorpion man. That's him dead. And the pale guards defensive, they're crumbling a little bit here. I mean, have you got money to spend? You have got money to spend. What are you going to go for? Are going to go for some basilisks, some counter artillery fire. I don't know if the Bastards will help you against the stock tanks, but there are plenty of infantry units for them to go for, as well as, if anything, just to blow up the defensive structures. I mean, you've got money for some air shaker rounds. That's fair enough. That'll be stuff coming in. Command squad, though. Can you go toe to toe against two stalker tanks? You do have some curse against the machine spirits that you can make use of. Oh, God, this is. Desperate engagement. Got a special weapon squad out there, and they will do very good damage against these stock tanks. We've also got the decimator. The charge straight on in. Rode a bomber continuing to lay down some strafing runs, but I, I doubt the efficiency of it. But a couple of special weapons seems exactly what the doctor ordered. Especially with these sentinels now come back over. Auto cannons and multi melters on them. Stock tanks aren't exactly the most tankiest of the uh, walk units for Chaos factions. But yeah, when you compare the stock tanks with the Defiler, it lacks some of the key things like artillery and stuff that has. The beastmen raging, blood and fury. Going to toe toe of these Urgrins. Also being ensured that they're being stayed alive and being inspired by the great Cardinal Zafan. He comes in. And also give a good show of those 
bombardments. A combination of like an auto bombardment that the uh, Space Marine Commander can do. As well as got that initial explosion. Yep, yeah, well like that. Just love the effects it leaves on the ground and the smoke as well. Real guard, the front lines struggling quite somewhat. The Kaskin's over, as well as a Vindicare assassin. Snipe out any targets. Vulture gunship. And the Beastman aren't exactly going to be doing much against the Vulture gunship. All is decimated for that man. And actually, maybe air players the way forward here. As if you're worried about the where you are, the F Shaker platform. Can't attack aircraft. So maybe a transition away from uh, infantry heavy stuff. Oh, that ever saw throwing a big EMP, was that? Big explosion. For the Avenger Strike Fighter. That's the generic aircraft in my bob. Some last cannons on there. Some machine guns as well. The general purpose aircraft. Got a Matilda battle tank. Able to equip not one, not two, not three, but four blast cannons. One of them being twin linked. So the perfect tank hunter weapon. What's good against aircraft, I imagine. There's a priest coming in. Full scale war, tier four. And a couple of Lehman Russes wouldn't go amiss here. Not at all. You can see, yeah, he's not going to go for. Yeah, Star Fox isn't really focusing too much on the infantry anymore. As that is a lost cause. Has lost it while well, he's about to lose his relic there. It'll be a real pain. And British gentleman, well, he's just expanded across the battlefield here. He's going to go for a Bane Sword. That's going to be a pain. Medusa is out, and that is. Not the place you want to put your Medusa. Oh dear. Medusa, compared to Basilisk, is able to do a. Oh, what are you? Oh, what spawns of harm? Okay. Fair enough. If you can forward, you're not going to stab things. I completely forgot the point I was going to make. Oh, yeah, the Medusa. Better at being an artillery against vehicles and buildings. Are you going to fire? Oh, he's just chill out. Fair enough. And why would you really want to get involved in combat? Just choose peace, man. Just choose peace. We've got a priest over here. But he's not choosing peace whatsoever. He's choosing the good old chain sword. But he has been shot down, sadly. Malkador is dead. Or whatever you call that tank. Warp spawn there. A fair bit. Oh, have you just turned into a warp spawn? Is that what's happened to you, Mr. Zafan? I didn't know you could, I didn't know that happened to you. But yeah, that's that happened. It's just a just, just potential hot spot. Okay, alright. Still able to bring in the bombardments there. That's interesting. Valkyrie fire annihilating a good chunk of Rexian infantry. Ballistic purse to whistle down. Imperial Guard now on the back foot here. You don't have much money, don't have much blue money in that sense. Plenty of green money there. British gentleman throwing up that preemptive GG here. The cheek, the disgust. Standing ready. How long there can the Imperial Guard last? That's my question. I mean, it's, it's, it's a defensible position. Got one entry point. Got plenty of money as well. Does the Vraxian player. Ben Salt, all he needs to do now is walk in. And that's the game one. But is he going to play for his food? Is this an opportunity for the guardsmen to maybe make a potential comeback? I mean, realistically, right? let's, let's, let's see what we can do. But the destroyer tank hunter, which would be great against these uh, vehicular stuff. We've got the artillery annihilating the bits and bobs here. Got no more aircraft left to play with because you've lost that. A limited amount of blue. Griffin on the way. Which is another artillery tank, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think artillery is going to get you any prizes here. It's going to have to be some sort of quick, fast moving. Go around the backside. Give them a cheeky one for. 
yeah, more artillery. And the longest barrel you've ever done did see. Warp spawn Zafan comes in. Trying to feel something. Trying to feel alive. Returned into the most devilish spawn of the war. As we take down as the commander, get some room away from him. And get eviscerator. Eviscerator, sorry. Where's the big bomb and kills that? Now jumps in. Going for some big slices. Al Kadob be taken out by that. Destroy a tank hunter. And actually, that's that's it. There's a potential for them to push out now. The chances are slim. But they've got the standard bearer flying his flag on high. Got the answers to all this in all, all the stuff that the Braxians have. Units to kill each unit type. Stock tank hunter goes down. Stand the bear on his own. Last standing in his squad. Let's just see what they can do. Tank hunter needs to kill that strike fighter as quickly as he can. The Eversaw continues to be an absolute nuisance. Go on, stand the bearer. Hit him with your flag. Or hit hell with your flag, sorry. Now that'd be improper. Improper use of Imperial property. One Kaskin survives. Go on, take her out. Take her out to dinner, at the very least. Sentinel's on the way. But here comes the Bane Sword. False herb. Star Fox here. Looked like he could potentially break out of this little defensible point here. But the Bane Sword comes in. And that, boys and girls, I believe is that. There's about maybe like three or four minutes left of the game, but I'm not going to put Star Fox through all the torture of watching him slowly being picked off one by one. They've got no chance, really, of killing this Bane Sword. He does not have the economy to really keep up. But very interesting game. Very defensive from both factions. I do believe that if one player just played a little bit more aggressive, uh, the game would have been over a lot quicker. And the Imperial Guard, when they broke through down here, they could have kept on going. And that would have basically like circumvented all these defences. Round up roundabouts into this like nice little soft underbelly where they could then push in, do some damage here, but a little bit shy. A little bit. I mean I suppose that's that's the thing for a lot of players who played Imperial Guard and other defensive factions. Is that because they've got the word defensive faction basically cooked into their gameplay, uh, they don't think of going on the offense. Which you know, makes sense. You know, if you're trying to play to your strengths. But you could have done with maybe Oh, but I mean, I suppose both players spending their economy a lot more uh, efficiently and seeing those bigger units coming out a little bit earlier. Yeah, cheers, boys, for sending in that game. More spot channel. Have a look at the old Patreon. One pound month gets much to give a week. And there is also a Discord where Discord things happen. Links in the description as always. My name's been Mr. Lunchark. Pleasure's always never chalk. Now, see you in a bit. Peace.